Today, we're going to learn more about Surge XT, an amazing free synthesizer. In this video, we'll learn about Surge XT's modulators, or in other words, how to use its LFOs and envelopes. Now, I'm going to assume you already know what LFOs and envelopes are, and you already know what envelope ADSR settings are. We're just going to talk about how to use them in Surge. First, let's start with the standard envelopes. The filter and amplitude envelopes are found here, and both have the standard ADSR controls. You can apply the amount of modulation for the filter envelope using these sliders. You can set the gain inside the filter using the VCA slider. You can change how the gain scales with velocity using the velocity slider. Lower values mean the velocity affects the amplitude more. An interesting feature is that you can tempo sync the amplitude, delay, and release controls by enabling the tempo sync option in the right click menu. You can do this individually or for all three at once. You have two options for the envelope shape, digital and analog. If set to analog, it will try to mimic an analog envelope shape. If set to digital, you can adjust the envelope's curves by moving the boxes over the envelope diagram. Surge has 12 configurable modulators, 6 voice modulators, and 6 scene modulators. Each one of these can be an LFO, an envelope, or one of a few variations which we'll talk about soon. A voice modulator can only affect voice parameters. For example, it can change the filter cutoff because this acts independently for all voices, but it can't change the reverb level because that affects all voices in a scene. The cool thing is that each voice gets modulated independently, so if you play multiple notes at the same time, each note has its own LFO that starts when each note plays like this. A scene modulator can be used on any parameters, including effects like distortion or reverb. However, it works together on all voices. So if you were to play multiple notes, a single LFO is applied to all voices together like this. The rest of these are the MIDI and MPE modulation sources, such as the Note Velocity, Mod Wheel, and MPE Timbre. It also has support for MIDI CC data to modulate just about anything. So if you want a specific knob on your MIDI controller to adjust Filter 1's cutoff, for example, you can assign it directly without having to use a macro. The MIDI Learn feature can help with this. Just right-click and enable MIDI Learn, move the knob or slider you want to attach, and it'll automatically be assigned. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. It helps my channel grow and reach more people, and YouTube will let you know when more videos come out. To set up a modulator, first select the one you want. I'll start with LFO1. Over here, you can select the modulator type. We'll talk about these in a minute, but for now, I'll leave it as a sine wave. Click again on the LFO1 button until it changes color. Everything you can apply to it will now turn green. Drag the slider on the parameter you want to modulate. The farther away this gets from the main slider, the more modulation is applied. You can do this for more than one parameter at a time if you want. To remove it, right-click on either the slider or the LFO button and remove it. You can also disable the modulation or edit the value to be the exact amount you want. When you're done applying the LFO, click on the button again. The slider will change its appearance to let you know that something is modulating it. The new appearance depends on the skin you're using. Another way to do this is to drag the modulation button to where you want to modulate and then set the amount directly. All this modulation can get complicated quickly. For example, let's pull up a preset AF analog bass. It is not easy to tell what's been modulated. I can click on each parameter and see, but that can take a while. To make it easier, you can use the modulation list. This gives you a list of all the custom modulations that are being applied. You can sort it by source, such as key track, macro 1, or LFO, for example, or you can sort it by target. For example, when sorting by target, you can easily see that two modulators are applied to CNA's filter 1 cutoff. 
You can remove, disable, or edit the modulations in this window. You can apply filters to make things easier to find. You can also hide some of the values to simplify the screen. You can also add new modulators on this screen. Go over here, add a source, and select the target, and then adjust the modulation amount. Each modulator also has its own envelope. As you can see, it can be used to further shape your LFO. These envelopes also come with a delay and a hold setting. The delay parameter is used to delay the envelope. One use of this would be to stagger the voices for moving pads or make other interesting sounds. The hold parameter holds the peak for a bit before starting the decay. You can turn off the envelope at any time by right-clicking and disabling it. The LFO settings are on the left. You can set the rate here. By default, it's time-based, but right-click and you can tempo sync it. The phase and amplitude of the LFO are set here. The deform setting varies based on the modulator type. For sine, triangle, and sawtooth, you get three types. Type 1. Type 2. And type 3. We'll talk about the other soon. The trigger mode is used to control how the LFO is triggered when notes are played. In free run, the LFO does not restart when the note is played. Everything that uses that LFO will be synced up. To demonstrate this, I'm going to apply an LFO to the volume of oscillator 1 and play the same chord over and over. You can hear how the volume of everything pulses with the LFO. It does not restart when you play new notes. Even when I stagger the notes of the chord, you get the same effect. You hear the pluck of the amplitude envelope, but the overall volume follows the LFO. On the other hand, key trigger causes the LFO to reset when a new note is played. Here's what it sounds like. If you hold a note long enough, you'll hear the oscillation of the LFO. Key trigger doesn't get rid of the LFO, it just resets it with each note. Also, if you stagger when you play the notes and hold them, you'll hear that all three notes are modulated separately. This is because we're using a voice LFO. If the play mode is set to poly, and you're using a voice LFO in either the key trigger or random modes, you'll get separate LFOs. On the other hand, if we were using a scene LFO, only the first voice sets the LFO position. Finally, random sets a random phase for each note played. Depending on how it is used, it can sound chaotic and random if heavily modulating an obvious parameter like amplitude, or interesting if modulating in a more subtle way. You can set the LFO to be unipolar or bipolar. Unipolar means it's one-sided, it moves from the base value to the max modulation value, and then back to the base value. Bipolar centers the modulation around the base value, so it goes both above and below it. Finally, the trigger mode only affects LFOs. It doesn't affect non-looping envelopes. You can select the modulation type here. 
You have some traditional LFO shapes such as sine, triangle, square, sawtooth, noise, as well as sample and hold noise. Noise and sample and hold noise are very similar. It appears that noise is just a low-pass filtered version of the sample and hold noise. In other words, noise is smooth, sample and hold jumps around. Also notice that the name of the modulator updates when switching between types. You can also rename it by double clicking. For the sine, triangle, and sawtooth waveforms, the deform setting has three types, which radically changes the shape of the waveform. For the square type, the deform setting changes the pulse width. Deform appears to change the filtering on the noise waveform. It looks like low pass and high pass filtering. The sample and hold shape has two deform options. Option 1 looks similar to the regular noise deform, and option 2 changes the shape of each segment. The envelope type is selected here. The modulator's envelope on the right is used to shape the envelope. Three deform options are available, and they basically set the curve shapes. The last deform option adds some noise on the envelope. Next is the step sequencer. This is useful anytime you want jumps and modulation, typically synced with the tempo. Probably the most common use is to make melodic sequences by modulating the pitch. It has 16 steps that you can set as a percentage over here. In Surge, the rate sets the length of each bar. If you set the rate to a 16th note, each bar will last a 16th note, and all 16 bars will cover a whole measure, or 4 beats in 4-4 four, four time. In this case, black bars represent beats 1, 2, 3, and 4. But what if you're in 3 fourth time? Slide the start and stop bars found at the edges until you're synced up with your time signature. This would be 12 bars at the 16th note rate. The left-right arrows on the left are used to cycle the values like so. A useful shortcut is to hold down the shift key which will quantize the values to scale degrees, or semitones, one twelfth of an octave. This can let you set the pitches in an octave exactly, assuming you're using standard tuning. Holding down the shift and alt keys can be used to do the same thing, but for two octaves. The bars on top are used for re-triggering the filter and amplitude envelopes when that part of the sequence is reached. You can hold shift or right click to instead trigger only one of the two envelopes. Don't forget that you have the envelope controls on the right as well. The deform setting has two types, both which make the curve smoother or more choppy. The MSEG option stands for Multi-Segment Envelope Generator. This allows you to make your own custom modulation curve. You can open the editor by clicking on the display, the pencil icon, or by double clicking on the MSEG button in the modulation types. There is so much to learn here that it would require its own separate tutorial, but here are the basics. You have an extensive right click menu with lots of options. Try some of these out when you get a chance. I'll start with the basic envelope by right clicking and selecting Create Minimal MSEG. Double click to add a new point. You can drag the points around to wherever you want. Click and drag the diamonds in between points to bend the curve shape. 
You can remove a point by double clicking on it. You can set it to repeat like an LFO by changing the edit mode at the bottom to LFO. This will cause a modulation to repeat, which will cause the endpoint's value to return to the start point. Or set it to envelope to have it only run once if you set the loop mode off. If you enable loop mode on, it will also reveal controls that allow you to select which part of the envelope is used for a custom sustain stage. The deform option will, as expected, deform the shape of your curve. The custom curves you can make are great for all sorts of cool modulation effects. Finally, the formula tab allows you to write your own custom modulator code using the Lua programming language. This is more work, but it's extremely powerful. If you've had some exposure to computer programming before, it's not hard to pick up. Surge XT has several built-in tutorials to get you started. There are also some of the basics explained in the user's manual. The deform settings effect is decided by the code you write. Surge's eight macros are here. You can adjust the macros by sliding the bar underneath its name, and you can map these macros to your MIDI controller if desired. Just like the other modulators, they can be renamed by double-clicking on them. The macros are shared between both scenes. You can also reorder the macros by left-clicking and dragging. Surge also has some convenient LFO presets. Select the modulator you want to apply a preset to, and then open the modulation menu on the bottom left. Then select the preset you want under the modulator type. Try a few of these out when you get a chance. Finally, you can copy and paste modulator settings between them. You can copy and paste the modulator, copy the modulator with its targets, which are the settings that are being modulated by this LFO or envelope, or copy the targets only. You can also switch between three modulator outputs. There's a raw waveform mode where the envelope is ignored, and there's an envelope generator only mode where only the envelope is used, and then there's the normal full mode where both are used. If you want to learn more about Surge XT, check out these videos, and I'll see you next time.